In this video, we finish off the Forest of 22 Vale, our custom LEGO City project where we build a unique house for every Series 22 CMF. Today, I build a Stardew Valley farmhouse for the horse and groom. Starting out, let's take a look at the figure. Mid-sized legs, green flannel shirt, new hat hair combo piece. Uh, it's cool and all, but I don't really think it's worth... <gasps> they included a carrot with the figure?! Seriously though, this pony, or foal, is far and away the best part about this minifigure. It looks adorable, and it's scaled perfectly next to regular sized horses. Great figure. 10 out of 10. Now the name on the other hand... What kind of a name is Horse and Groom? What does that even mean? Is someone getting married? I'm just gonna look it up. A groom or stable boy, stable hand, stable lad, is a person who is responsible for some or all aspects of the management of horses and or the care of the stables themselves. I mean, you could of color stable lass. Moving swiftly on, I think it's time to start the build. As I mentioned, we're gonna try to replicate the look of the farmhouse from Stardew Valley. I recently started playing the game for the first time and it completely hooked me. The gameplay is so much fun with fantastic writing, an awesome soundtrack, beautiful pixel art, and just to think the whole game was created by one person is mind-blowing. I'm super excited for Haunted Chocolatier. I want to try to capture a bit of that Stardew Valley magic within LEGO Bricks. So, time to channel my inner Jumino and get building, after I clear some space. I've decided that this remaining forest area just isn't enough room for the farm I want to make. There is, however, a lot of wasted space between the Forest Elf and Troubadour's houses. I probably should have planned that out better. But we can finally remedy it now by moving the forest hideaway and all the surrounding foliage about eight studs to the right. It doesn't give us a ton of extra room, but it'll make a huge difference in what we can build here now. I can put this white picket fence up on either side without the whole thing feeling super cramped. This gate to the Toucan Research Station took a couple of iterations, but I finally decided on this arch piece. The gate could even open and close. As for the house, I'm gonna build its foundation over here on the city base plates, and then moving over the desk to build the main structure. Here, I'll use one of these smaller base plates with a temporary foundation that makes it easy to pop the house off. Well, kinda. I guess we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Anyway, I'll build up the first layer of the wall, and then it's onto the interior. This is definitely the starter house you get in the game, based on its tiny size. So all we really have room for in here is the bed you try to get to before passing out at 2am, an adorable little fireplace, and instead of a regular TV that would be in here, the stable lass much prefers the books she keeps on this bookshelf I made with a sideways building technique. Not much of a fan of watching stuff, I guess. Off to the side, I'll build a stack of firewood, then this tiny little door that can technically kind of open, and a window, complete with these neat little shutters. Since you never really see the sides or back of the farmhouse in game, I can only assume that they're completely void of any detail. So that's what we're doing as well. Can't even blame it on commentary this time. I used every last medium nougat brick we had to build up these walls, until we get to... <sighs> the roof. The roof is gonna be dark red, and I was originally planning on using the exact same design as I used in this castle mock here, except it looks kind of bad, especially without a corresponding apex piece, making the top look way too flat and blocky. So, I had the brilliant idea to use two plates for the roof, each hinged on a support beam. The roof itself looks better, but the gaps between it and the rest of the walls was another story. I don't have nearly enough nougat slopes, one by one plates, or snot bricks to make this work. So we'll substitute them with curved slopes, studs, and tan snot bricks, respectively. Disgusting. I tried to cover some of this up with tiles attached to the side of the roof, but it was like putting lipstick on a pig. You can't fix ugly. I spent over twice the time it took me to build the entire rest of the house struggling with this mess. And even after all of that frustration, it still was just not working. <sighs> It was time for a different approach. Two massive changes completely saved this project. Instead of hinging the roof segments to the building and hoping they line up, I just hinged the segments together and let gravity keep the roof in place. Technically, this is an illegal building technique, but I don't think anyone really cared. However, that didn't solve the main problem of what on earth to do with the gaps here. So the second epiphany I had was to use cheese slopes here instead. Plus, I scavenged the Ideas Treehouse set we've been building on stream for all the one by one plates I needed. Unfortunately, we don't have any medium nougat cheese slopes, so between dark tan and dark red, I decided on the latter. And I think Baby Yoda would appreciate it if I didn't have to steal all of them from his clothes. Ironically, it gives us the same stair-steppy look we were trying to avoid in the first place, but out of everything I've tried today, this is definitely the best option. It's totally worth it too. 
because with this tiled shingle pattern and chimney I was able to add, plus this tiny little window that makes a lot more sense now, this whole house turned out phenomenal. It looks just like the real thing. Now, let's pop the entire assembly off the base plate and transfer it over to the city. It nestles right in here, but you may notice that I left a gap off to the left. Well, since this figure has a horse, and horses are in the game, I thought it would only be fitting to also build the stable in the only acceptable place to put it, so the roofs sort of slope together. This centaur minifigure piece from series 21 has the exact same dual molded colors as the new foal. It could be his mom or something. Uh, only issue is, it doesn't have a head. So let's just drape this fabric piece over the doorway and hope no one notices. I found this fantastic design for the roof, and after a bit of work, I realized you can totally see that the horse is decapitated from over by the Toucan Research Station. So let's just give it a brick build head instead. I suppose it's better than nothing. Now this cover isn't necessary, since it isn't the game anyways, and we can add in some hay and a feeding trough inside, now that it actually has a mouth to feed. With the stable finished, we can put all three roof segments back on and move on to the crops. There are so many different varieties of fruits and vegetables that you can grow in the game, but I decided only three would be able to fit. Peppers, growing on this custom plant in case you want to mass produce pepper poppers or film a challenge video or something. Pumpkins, with a few different stages of growth, and a big field of wheat to keep the animals fed. This field is watered using this spinning sprinkler and protected from those pesky birds with this scarecrow. Not a perfect match, but I don't know, maybe it's some kind of rare crow. I laid down a cobblestone path through the peppers and completed this area with this functional mailbox and a shipping bin. Speaking of which, how on earth is Lewis gonna get here to collect all the crops you sell? The property is kind of boxed in with the fences, railroad, and endless chasm and everything. Well, for once, the train could actually serve some functional purpose. We'll clear out whatever's going on in this boxcar here and fill it with crops to ship out to other parts of the city. Ironic how she's one of the biggest suppliers for a trend that she has no interest in watching, but we'll label this car with the logo of the farm's main export. Anyways, this whole thing kind of makes Lewis obsolete but we can just make him the conductor instead. I think he'd like that. We never ended up using this triangle of land next to the swamp, so I'm just gonna steal this tree from my castle and put it there instead. <laughs> And a dead one over here. You know, pollution. Okay, wow. I think the farm looks great, but how does it compare to the real thing? I could just show footage of my 100 hour save file, but I think I'll make a new account in the spirit of the build. With these settings in check, I started work. My main goal for this account is getting two things, a stable and a red beanie. Let's see how long it takes to get them. Five hours later, here we are. This took a bit longer than expected and almost a full season in game, but I did it. Horse and groom, complete with a stylish red beanie. I even have a carrot, just like the minifigure, but now I kind of want to add the crops in so it matches even more, but that's probably not worth my time. I don't want to talk about it. Pumpkins don't grow here in the summer, so I substituted them with melons. Not too shabby. I can't wait to show the side-by-side -side comparison of these, but first, I need to make some Lego farm tools. An axe, a hoe, watering can, pickaxe, scythe, fishing pole, and sword. This is the objectively correct hot bar order, and I will fight you in the comments if anyone says otherwise. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for. Drum roll, please. Boom! This looks pretty spot on if I do say so myself. The Lego tools on the UI really helped to sell the look. But with that done, this whole project took way longer than initially expected, but I am so happy with how it all turned out. It was a really fun challenge turning pixel art into bricks, a process we're going to take out of this world next time. For now though, thank you so much for watching. Comment below with how many hours you've played Stardew Valley, and if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go eat a star drop.